All right, so one of the most important concepts in AC circuits and AC circuit analysis is what's called a phaser. So in this lecture, we're going to define what a phaser is. So in simple terms, a phaser is a way to represent a sine wave or a sinusoid in terms of its amplitude and phase angle only, but it implies that the frequency is fixed. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's say, for example, that we have a voltage waveform that's given by this equation. So V of T is equal to, let's say, Vm, so the magnitude or the amplitude of the voltage waveform times the cosine of omega t plus some angle theta. And this, of course, would be in volts. So we can say then that this right here is what we're going to call the time domain so I'm going to write it over here, the time domain expression. Now, if we want to represent this in a phasor domain, we would rewrite this waveform as V, and I'm going to say V phasor is going to be equal to Vm. So again, the amplitude of that waveform at an angle of theta. And this is going to be volts. Now, notice one thing between these two steps and that is that the frequency or the angular frequency omega is not given in this second expression, which is in phasor domain form. So let me write it over here. This is going to be the phasor domain expression. And the reason behind that is because if you have a circuit, let's say, and I'm going to use a different color over here. So let me draw a voltage source over here. And I'm going to draw, let's say, a resistive circuit. So this is some resistive circuit. This, of course, is our resistance. And this over here would be our voltage input. The reason why we're ignoring the frequency in the phasor domain expression, or rather the reason why we can ignore the frequency in the phasor domain expression is because let's say that we're trying to calculate the voltage across this resistor. So let's say V sub R. We're trying to calculate that in this circuit. If the voltage source has a frequency, let's say, of 60 hertz, then the voltage that's going to appear across the resistor, and in fact, the current as well. So let's say that we have some current I. And actually, let me write this in capital letters, I. So the voltage and the current that's going to appear across that resistor is going to have the same frequency as the voltage source. In other words, they're going to have a frequency of 60 hertz. Now, of course, the amplitude of that voltage may be different than the input voltage. The current is going to have a different amplitude as well. But again, the frequency is going to be the same. So for that reason, it is common in AC circuit analysis to express currents and voltages in terms of what's called the phasor domain expression. That's because it's just easier to analyze a circuit without paying attention to the frequency. Again, if you have a source that is operating at a certain frequency in a circuit, then we know that the voltages and currents at any other component in the circuit is going to have the same frequency. So we can make the assumption that that frequency is going to be the same and therefore just drop it out of the expression for our voltages and currents and just use the phasor domain expression. So I wrote it down over here, but just for completeness, let's say that we have a current that in time domain expression or its time domain expression would be I of T, let's say is equal to its magnitude I sub M times the cosine of omega T plus phi, let's say. Again, this would be the time domain expression. So I'm gonna put it over here, time, domain, then we can say that the phasor domain expression for that same signal is going to be I phasor is going to be equal to its amplitude, so I sub M at an angle of phi. And this, of course, if this was in amperes, this would be in amperes as well. So we can convert from the time domain expression, so let's say this one over here, to the phasor domain expression over here. Same thing for the current time domain expression over here, phasor domain expression over here. Again, we're making the assumption here that the frequency is going to be the same 
throughout the circuit and therefore we can drop it from our representation of voltages and currents. And that's not actually an assumption, that's a fact. So the frequency in a circuit, or rather in an AC circuit, is going to be the same in all of those components in the circuit. The only thing that's going to change is the amplitude, as we mentioned here, so V sub M or I sub M, or the phase angle, which we've called theta for the voltage and phi for the current. So it is very helpful to express things in what's called the phasor domain rather than the time domain, just to make our analysis a little bit easier. Now, just for completeness, let me show you an example. So let's say that this voltage source over here, V of T, and I'm going to use the same color. So this right here, V of T, let's say that it's of the form, let's say 18 sine 377T plus 30 degrees. And that's of course in volts. Then we can say that the phasor domain equivalent of that would be V is going to be equal to the same amplitude, 18, at an angle of positive 30 degrees. And that would be in volts as well. And then let's do another example for the current. Let's say that we have a current that in time domain, its current is given by the following equation. So let's say that we have 17.2 sine 400T minus 30 degrees. That's in amps, of course. Then we can say that the phasor domain equivalent of that would be I is going to be equal to the same amplitude, so 17.2 at an angle of minus 30 degrees. And that, of course, would be also in amperes. So again, I've said it a couple of times, but I'm going to repeat it because it's very important. When we go from time domain to the phasor domain, we drop the frequency out of the expression because all of the components in the same circuit are going to have the same frequency for both the voltage and the current. So we don't need to specify what the frequency is. Notice that in the phasor domain expression, that doesn't tell us what the frequency of the circuit is. However, we know if we know the frequency of the source in the circuit, we know that the voltages and currents throughout the rest of the circuit are going to have the same frequency. That cannot change in an AC circuit where you have just one source or multiple sources operating at the same frequency. So it's not important to show the frequency anymore because we know that all of the components in a circuit are going to have the same frequency. That's why it's very helpful, again, to use what's called the phasor domain expression as was shown here for the voltage over here and the current over here in this example.